just jump in for time's sake. Okay, um, we are gonna start at 11.55. So again, I'm just gonna take the first two seconds just to give a very short intro and then um, I will hand it over to you guys. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Navila. I work for the Center of Teaching, Learn, Research, and Learning. Before we get started, I wanted to mention a few things. Captioning is available for this session. To turn on captions, there should be an option at the bottom of the screen in the Zoom toolbar that says show subtitles. If you do not see it, you may need to click on the more option. Also, there will be an anonymous survey posted at the end of the session as a QR code that you can scan with your phone. And I will also put the link in the chat. With that being said, um, I will hand it over to our presenters. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. All right, can everyone see the, the slideshow? 
we can, but you're still in. Are you going to full screen mode? Oh, you you can't see. We can me. see your preview slot, or oh, okay. I don't know if that's what you want, but we can see your your. Uh, it's be showing you. Yeah. All right. Try that one more time. Full size now. All right, Monica, do you want to start us off with introductions? Yes, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our, our talk. We're excited to have you all here. So we're going to be talking about the role of, of mentoring here um, at AU. So I am Monica Jackson. I'm Deputy Provost and Dean of Faculty. Am I, or Meg, do you want to go next? I'm Meg Bentley. I'm the Director of STEM Partnerships and Innovation. I'm Priya Doshi. I'm the Associate Dean of Faculty and Inclusive Excellence. I'm Shirin Sabat Adam, and uh, I'm a professorial lecturer at SPA. And I'm Darian Sproul. I'm the Senior Project Manager of Advance AU. Uh, before we begin, I just want to mention that throughout this presentation, if you have any questions, comments, any aha moments, please put them in the chat. And we'll do our best to address them either during this presentation or following up with you afterwards. Here is our agenda. I'm going to put this in the chat as well in case you want to refer to it. <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna start with a couple of quick warm-ups. Naturally, um, everyone has a different idea of what mentorship means. So the next two slides are going to get you thinking about what mentorship means for you and whether or not you're benefiting from it. There should be some poll questions coming up. First question is, do you have a person to consult for professional guidance at AU? And then the second follow-up question, if yes, how often do you engage with that person? So it's looking pretty split. It seems like there's a, a group that has someone that they can consult with at AU. And there's a pretty significant group that, all, that says that sometimes they have someone to consult with. So it begs the question, you know, if you are meeting with someone often, is, is the interaction creating um, more opportunities for you in your career? Is there growth in your development as a faculty member? All right, so we're gonna end the poll. Now, continuing with this initial assessment of your experiences with mentorship, um, there will be a link in the chat for a Jamboard, which will be an anonymous board where you can add your thoughts in the form of a sticky note to the two questions posed. The first question is, what does mentorship mean to you? And the second one is, how does mentorship contribute to a sense of belonging and retention? And as different themes show up on the Jamboard, I'll point them out in real time. And if this is anyone's first time using a Jamboard, on the side, there is a column where if you go to the fourth icon down, there's a sticky note.
and you have the ability to drag them around so so you you don't have to overlap anyone else's uh, points or ideas. And feel free to answer one or both of the questions. Remember the first one, what does mentorship mean to you? And the second one, how does mentorship contribute to sense of belonging and retention? So I see the word guidance appear a lot. Sharing ideas. We'll give us about a minute and a half more. New skills. Value. Oh, thank you, Priya. Trust, it's a big theme as well. Well, we'll get about 30 seconds. And remember, these questions are just to get you thinking about the topics that we're going to further explore in the presentation. All right, thank you everyone who posted on the Jamboard. Um, at this point, we're going to dive into our session learning goals. Um, so now that you've been thinking about mentorship, whether it be your, your own experience or an ideal experience that you haven't had yet, uh, we want to share our learning goals and then proceed with the conversation about mentorship and the different capacities of mentorship. Um, the first goal is to identify effective methods of faculty mentoring for various types of goals. So various types of goals we mean, for example, promotion, publication, pedagogical support, whatever it is the faculty member needs. And each faculty member has a different set of needs that a mentor could contribute to. Our, our next goal is to recognize the need for mentoring as a form of community building, uplifting achievements, and promoting retention. And finally, finally, distinguish between different forms of faculty development that are best handled online versus person to person. Great. So I want to talk a little bit about how this work came about. Um, we are fortunate to be one of only eight institutions in the country to have an advanced grant that's funded from NSF. And this is a three year grant. And it builds on upon the grant we had two years ago, which is an advanced catalyst grant. In the catalyst grant, we were tasked with going through and doing an assessment of our policies and procedures to seeing how AU actually works. With the adaptation grant, now we're able to actually implement and adapt um, priorities and agendas that we discovered as part of the catalyst grant. 
And the main thing that we're trying to do is to address the systematic barriers in higher education that impede women and underrepresented groups in succeeding in academia. And we have a number of project activities that we are working on here. So for one, the big one is that we hired our first Associate Dean of Faculty in Inclusive Excellence, and that's Priya Doshi. She's on, on this call. And she's done some amazing work. And with this, we are trying to make sure everything that we do in the, pro in the provost office has a lens to inclusive excellence and it supports our inclusive excellence plan. And so she works very closely with campus life on these endeavors. We also, you probably may have heard about our mini grants that we have for STEM faculty. We've awarded 10 grants this year, totaling $11,000. And these grants have been used for different things such as faculty using them to travel to conferences, to you know, paying publication costs, buying equipment, anything to help support their work here at AU. We've hosted a, a fall symposium on race and gender. We did one last semester. We'll be doing one coming up on April 11th, and you'll hear more about that, and I hope you can join us with that. Um, the peer mentoring cohorts are something new that we're adding this year, and I'm not going to talk a lot about that because Meg Bentley is going to talk to you about that on, a, on the slide. And we also are really excited. We are looking into investigating how the Boyer model can help faculty um, excel here. And so ironically today, the, at the Dean's Council meeting, we did a presentation with the Dean today to discuss the Boyle model. And so we'll be bringing this to the faculty later. But in general, what this does, it, it provides a way to look at scholarship differently. To and not just the measure, regular measures we've been using to see how many publications you have and if you're in the top journals, but looking at a different lens that it has an inclusive excellence lens. And finally, we're going to be doing a lot more across campus to be sure our campus is aware of the um, projects of the advanced grant. All right. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the peer mentorship cohorts that Monica just mentioned as one of our activities for the adaptation grant. I'm going to give you sort of uh, what the activity looks like in the context of the grant and what we've been trying to implement for the past, I guess, since we got the grant. Um, and then I'm going to talk in the next slide a little bit about how we chose this peer mentorship uh, framework for doing this mentoring focused work. So we have uh, the, the grant supports uh, these activities. Um, and like Monica said, we are, you know, <laughs> sort of rare in this this set of institutions that have these advanced grants. And so um, it's really exciting to be able to finally implement this work um, in a meaningful sort of impactful way where individuals really uh, see benefit from it. So um, so uh, we have two peer mentorship cohorts that we've piloted this year. Uh, the 2023-2024 academic year. We have one cohort that is dedicated for associate professors going up for promotion and a second uh, separate cohort for term faculty uh, at any level uh, going up for promotion. And when I say going up for promotion, we're not in, we haven't identified people based on a, a temporal sequence. It's not like they have to be going up within a certain time. Uh, so people have really self-selected to be parts of those cohorts. Uh, based on those, um, their professional aspirations and, and just a willingness to be involved in this pilot. Uh, but we have two tracks because we feel like the mentorship uh, and the specifics of, of, of those two professional courses is very unique. Uh, and so we have uh, created separate cohorts. But we have 22 total participants, uh, I think 12 in one and 10 in the other. So a really great number in both of them. And what I love about it is there is an absolute cross-section of backgrounds uh, disciplinary focuses, uh, school affiliations, time at AU, race, gender, ethnicity, lived experience, all this stuff, uh, all the things um, that make a cohort really exciting. Um, and so that's really been great to actually, during this pilot year, have a really rich uh, cohorts to work with and to support. The cohorts meet roughly once a month. We started in November of 2023, which seems like a thousand years ago, but wasn't that far ago. Uh, but we meet once a month um, and we are going to continue to meet monthly through the end of the academic year uh, 2024 and likely still hopefully engage as a, you know, sort of an established cohort afterward. Uh, while people are actually going up for promotion. And every topic, uh, the cohorts differ in sort of their approach, but um, uh, the topics, uh, the topic that we talk about 
or the, the sort of menu of things we talk about uh, varies each month. So Monica just mentioned the Boyer model. Next, next in January, late January, the term faculty cohort is going to talk about how the Boyer model and understanding what that looks like uh, really can help you establish a professional identity, a scholarly identity. But we also talk about logistics, um, you know, the nitty gritty, the where do you find the checklist for doing this and understanding what's the first thing you do if you're interested in, in going up for promotion. And also, we really try and focus on making sure we talk about policies and procedures and understanding the complexity of those those processes. Uh, and then we also talk about sharing career, career development resources. So for example, the, the mentoring cohorts are gonna get together at Ann Farron tomorrow and have lunch together. So we're all gonna attend Ann Farron together and sort of have a social, but also a, a professional uh, networking experience together. Um, and so, um, and of course, um, as part of the grant, we're gonna have evaluations built in to, to sort of assess if we've achieved uh, by the end, <laughs> There's many endpoints, but if we've achieved what um, we want to achieve through these peer mentorship cohorts. So we I, I mentioned these are pilots. So if if you are interested, if you uh, if you're like, hey, this is me, I need to be in one of these cohorts, um, please, uh, we will the advanced team will be sending out announcements and we will definitely um, continue to offer these through the to, through the lifetime of the grant. So we there will be opportunities for you uh, to participate moving forward in lots of different ways. So I encourage you to just keep your eyes open um, for that. And we all are thinking about um, different levels or different faculty levels and different needs of different uh, um, different roles of different faculty. So that's what that framework or sort of that activity has looked like. So on the next slide, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we chose peer mentorship as a model. I mean, if you start to, you know, I think as, as academic scholars, um, at least in my experience, you know, I joined, I'm a biologist, I joined a lab, I had one boss, I had peers, but that PI that um, my, my mentor was really, who I sought all my information from, right? And so I think a lot of us are very used to this hierarchical mentor-mentee model, sort of a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. And that certainly has value. That is certainly something that I think a lot of us think of when we, at, when, when we ask you that question, do you have a person you go to, right? That's, that could be an example of a hierarchical mentor. Um, and that has real value. Um, there's also group mentoring, um, and uh, and reverse mentoring, which are both um, uh, frequent uh, types of mentoring frameworks in higher education and in academic settings. Um, but we chose what's uh, sort of highlighted here as peer mentoring, right? And so our peer mentor cohorts are specific cohorts, either associate faculty, um, all um, you know interested in the same aspiration of going up for full, or peer mentors in the form of term faculty who have a very unique and specialized role at AU. And so that peer mentorship model actually allows us to, to, to um, I mean, we're not saying get rid of your hierarchical mentoring, right? We're just adding that peer cohort onto this rich mentoring um, ecosystem. And so we've listed some of the real advantages uh, for peer mentorship. One of them is that, you know, establishing a one-on-one -on -one relationship with all of our term faculty or all of our associate professors is just logistically challenging, right? And so the peer mentorship model really does expand the capacity for mentoring. And if mentoring is really this critical part of belonging, of self-worth, of building trust, of feeling valued, right? That we do not wanna limit that access in any kind of way that, uh, that requires you to find that one person <laughs> who's the, the mentor of your dreams. And so, and so I've also um, highlighted the other elements of peer mentorship that I really have started to appreciate and actually found, I think, are, are developing in our term faculty cohort. And that's that it, it absolutely widens networks. We have a term faculty cohort from people in every single school in the, in the college or in the university. And these are folks some of whom I've known and some of whom I have expanded to, you know, have met for the first time and it's expanded my network and my understanding of how the institution works. And so, and inherently, right, that creates uh, the other favorite thing that I love about this cohort, which is 
it expands the diversity of topics and ideas that we talk about. When there's a hierarchical mentor-mentor relationship, there's a limitation to what comes to those conversations. Um, um, so I really like this expansive part uh, of generating diverse ideas and topics. Um, and if you have any other ideas of if you've ever been involved in peer mentorship and, and can think of anything other anything else, other values to this, uh, please put it in the chat. But I am going to turn it over to one of our uh, term faculty uh, participants, Sharon, and she's going to talk about her her experience so far. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Meg. Um, so as you know, Meg mentioned about many benefits and advantages of uh, mentorship program. I want to tell you uh, about you know my story. Um, so back in, I think it was end of the September of 2023 that I received the email from Advance AU regarding this mentorship um, program. And, you know, uh, I always looked for opportunities to grow in my job and looked for uh, resources. And I found it to be an interesting, um, you know, opportunity to apply for. And uh, that's why, you know, I applied for this program and I got accepted in October. And as Meg uh, mentioned, we had two um, you know, meetings together in November and December. And uh, I learned you know, many different things from uh, you know, very experienced colleagues um, you know, about mentorship and uh, the term faculty process. Um, in the first meeting, we talked about the history of uh, you know, term faculty and um, you know, uh, we get to know each other as colleagues from many different you know, disciplines, uh, which is very valuable to learn about, you know, different, um, you know, disciplines um, and, uh, you know, that, you know, how the term faculty works in that, uh, you know, uh, in different uh, departments and schools. Uh, we also talk about, you know, faculty manual, re reappointment, you know, promotion process, omnibus, you know, guideline for, uh, you know, continuing appointment. And, uh, you know, we talk about the key dates. Um, uh, we were able to ask our questions in a very friendly and enriching environment, um, you know, about the you know, teaching portfolio or the process uh, that we need to go through. Uh, for all of this, you know, promotion and reappointment. Um, so, um, as you know, Meg mentioned, there will be another gathering, a social gathering tomorrow at Anfer conference as well, which is another example of you know uh, making a very good and uh, you know cohort uh, and you know making a team together. So this you know um, mentorship program you know provide a very safe environment. Uh, for me, as a um, you know, as someone um, like a junior faculty in this, uh, you know, term faculty uh, position, um, so it's my third year as a term faculty, uh, you know, uh, as a term ter term faculty, and finding a really rich resource for term faculty is not that easy. Um, you know, it this. Um, you know, cohort provide me a very good opportunity to learn from others' experience and uh, from other faculties, uh, faculties that they've been through the same or similar journey as, you know, I've been in and I'm going through it. Uh, you know, I expect to, uh, you know, grow my network through this, you know, cohort and this program. I, you know, would like to, you know, learn much more about uh, the story of uh, other, you know, exceptional, you know, colleagues uh, that, you know, their challenge, the challenges they had, the opportunities that they, um, you know, face and, you know, how they deal with them, how they improve over years. And uh, also uh, the other thing that I would like to get from this, uh, you know, cohort is that I would like to learn about some opportunities and some strategies. Um, uh, you know, that make me able to enhance, you know, term faculty pass by making it more equitable and inclusive for everyone. And I think that's um, a really important thing that we can, you know, learn from this uh, together. Um, so I want to ask a question from everyone uh, who is attending here. I want to see if you find this model to be, um, you know, something that you would like to attend or is there any um you know 
any model that you would like to be, uh, is this a model that you would like to be expanded? So you can just raise your hand. I'm gonna just um, you know, talk about you know, one example, another example that they had as well. Um, you know, I've, um, you know, one of the, the other example that, you know, I can have for you is that, you know, I, uh, you know, I attended in a term faculty mentorship program at SBA. Uh, we were able to, um, uh, you know, at SBA, we had a term faculty affair committee that they implemented uh, their own, own um, mentorship program by matching faculties from different uh, departments uh, within the school. And uh, you know, we had this program since last summer and um, you know, it has, uh, you know, there are a lot to be um, done in this um, you know, mentorship program, but I would like to learn about your experience. What you have been through, uh, is there any uh, thing that you have done in your department that you would like to share here? Uh, you can raise your hand. Um, and or you can just write it in the chat. Shireen, I'll offer something um, that I thought was rather informal, but really helpful to me when I began as a term faculty member here at AU. Um, and that was that um, due to partially space reasons, but actually I think it was rather strategic, my department chair actually had me sharing offices with another new term faculty member. Um, and as it turned out, we were both teaching different sections of the same class. And that turned into a really um, helpful resource because we were constantly turning to each other, learning from each other um, in our first year as term faculty, which is, of course, a, a tough time, your first year teaching full time. Um, and I thought that that was really an important way to link us organically. Um, and, you know, still I consider this colleague to be one of my closest friends. And so I thought that was really helpful because we had a lot of informal discussions in the course of sharing our offices and having to teach the same class for the first time. That's such a great example. Thank you for sharing, Sophia. Also, Brian uh, mentioned something in chat. Um, you know, he's interested to, uh, you know, to be considered in the program. I think, you know, there's going to be another cohort uh, going on. I think Meg is going to talk about that. Anyone else wants to share? Um, I think Bridget had something in the chat too, Shireen. Oh, I did. You know, I think it comes down to also just time. I think that there are so many teaching challenges right now that I that I feel like we're almost like as faculty, you know, um, trying to capture juggling balls that some of this is so central to what we're doing, but gets pushed off, pushed off. And I have to take a uh, a sword for for this as well because I thought it would be great. I think it would be great if faculty can sit in whether it's like in classes that we, you know, teach the same sections of or even across campus. I think the most enriching mentorship opportunity I had this fall was teaching imagining the good life and complex problems because I really got to see how, you know, folks who teach in SIS approach a seminar class. But it's so hard to find the time to do all this stuff. So I, I feel like that's a huge challenge for us. Uh, finding the time is you know, really you know, challenging. And I think you know, that's, um, so one thing that you know, this cohort has done is that they have a routine um, you know, type of you know, meeting that they try to uh, you know, meet every month and uh, you know, it's not too much, uh, it doesn't take too much of time. Uh,
Okay, thanks, Shireen. Um, yeah, I also wanted to, before I get into talking about some of the online resources that are available to you, I'm going to talk about both online resources and also in-person resources or tips that you can use for mentoring. Um, I did want to see whether, I know we have some other members of the current cohorts that are on this call, so I just wanted to see whether anybody else wanted to jump in who's also in one of the existing cohorts to highlight anything that's been um, important about their experience with um, with the peer mentoring model. All right. Well, if anything comes to you all, thank you for coming and uh, and please do drop your comments into the chat. Oh, wait, there's one message. Okay, nope, that's pretty good. Okay, great. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit about online resources. So I want to underline that all of these are free. So that's actually a wonderful thing, right? Um, and so the first of these is NCFDD, which stands for the National, oh, I never get this acronym right, but it's the National Committee, I think, for Faculty Diversity and Development. Um, and AU has an account, an institutional account. So every faculty member at AU can just basically create their profile by going to this website. And there you have both on demand and um, also uh, virtual sessions that you can sign up for that really have a vast variety of mentoring tools for you. So I think that there are probably about 400 unique accounts that AU already has, but I did want to emphasize this because a lot of faculty may forget that this exists, but it is a free resource. It's an available to you. So everything from workshops on how to find time for your writing to teaching practices to, you know, talking about yourself in terms of your promotion files, et cetera, is findable on this NCFDD website. So I definitely encourage you to take advantage of that resource. Um, in addition, there is, of course, our own CTRL. So kudos to CTRL for doing this wonderful conference every year and also all the programming that they offer throughout the year. But on their um, teaching support page, there are a number of great resources that, that are updated constantly that have to do with everything from you know, teaching practices to the professional development resources you need as you go through your career advancement here at AU. Um, and those are research backed They're you know, constantly being updated. So it's a place that I would definitely encourage you to visit, bookmark and take a look at as you're thinking about ways to, um, to uh, improve your career trajectory. Um, the third um, site I want to point you to is the Dean of Faculty's website. Um, so we also have a number of resources on our page and we do update those as well. They're very, you know, much pertinent to what you need to know at AU in terms of what's available to you. So I would recommend that you visit that site as well. Um, and, you know, there is a difference in what you see on that site when you visit it publicly, which is, I, I put the public link here, versus when you sign in through the portal. So some things are going to be protected behind the portal login. Um, and so it'll just prompt you if you hit up one of those links to sign in with your credentials. Um, but I did want to emphasize that there's both a public and a private um, or public and pass or portal protected version of that website. And then lastly, um, one uh, resource that Meg actually let me know about was the National Research Mentoring Network. Um, this is more specific for the sciences, but it's another free place um, that you can go and create an account. And um, it gives you the opportunity to connect with diverse mentors and, and mentees. And again, has a number of really great resources. Um, Meg, did you want to add anything else about um, the National Research Mentoring Network? I took a quick reminder visit to their website this morning, and I just discovered a whole bunch of courses on unconscious bias and all sorts of exciting things. So it's for faculty, but it's also for your students. Um, and so it's it's worth a visit and five minutes of and it's it's for the biosciences, but it's not it's for everyone. <laughs> so it's a Thank great you, place. Yeah. And in addition, I'd also point you, actually, I didn't put this one up there, but I would point you to um, AU's own um, HR website because there's, uh, there are actually a number of resources there. It's not it's not really staff specific. I mean, there are a lot of resources that are um, geared towards the entire AU community, but there are things I think that would be really important for faculty to take a look at. So they have some LinkedIn learning that's available for you know expanding your inclusive uh, practices in terms of how you teach and how you lead and how you interact with colleagues. So that's another um, website that I would say is really helpful and free um, for people to use. 
Any questions about any of these before I move on? All right. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So um, we also wanted to talk to you a little bit about going beyond the internet. You know, so what's what you should be using the internet for versus where you need a deeper dive, right? So I would definitely encourage everybody to check with your academic unit for more resources. We know that there's a lot happening at the school level in terms of resources that schools are providing, and we want to really support that. So um, if you don't know about what exists, you know, feel free to ask somebody, ask your department chair, ask your associate dean. Um, you know, ask your faculty coordinator and they may be able to provide you with additional resources or people you can talk to. I would also highly encourage you to review the university and school policies and guidelines. So these are changing, um, you know, they're, they evolve over time. So definitely take some time. And as you're looking to prepare, for example, a file, or you're looking to um, figure out your next steps here at AU, you may want to just go through those, read through them, you know, and then come to um, people with questions that you might have. Um, I'd also encourage you to attend both the live and um, watch recorded sessions from the NCFDD and CTRL, the two resources that I named before. So you don't always have to be available when those um, events are available to you. You can see them in recorded versions. And then I'd also encourage you to join professional and academic organizations and attend their conferences, events, and workshops. Um, for those of you that have been to conferences, you know what a plethora of resources they can provide, both in terms of face-to-face -face interactions, but also resources that other institutions and other organizations have out there that could be of use for you. Um, I would say bring your nuanced and interpretive questions, particularly pertaining to guidelines or policies and practices to, um, to your peers, but also to, um, to people like uh, the Dean of Faculty's office or to your associate deans. Um, so, and, and the other thing I would, I would recommend is asking colleagues and faculty leaders for examples or templates of successful um, faculty files, for example. So, you know, if you're looking for guidance on teaching portfolios, definitely consult with CTRL. But in addition, you may want to ask a colleague um, in your department, do you have a template that you'd be willing to share or ask your department chair if they could anonymize something that they um, would feel comfortable sharing with others in the department to share show how something was structured as a way to um, help guide you um, in, in terms of putting together those important promotional or reappointment documents. I mean, I, and I would also ask your colleagues to have a look at your documents. Um, you know, having that peer review um, of what you've prepared can actually be really beneficial because they might be, they might say to you, you know what, I don't think you're selling yourself as strongly as you could be, or I think that you've left out something essential, or I want to hear more about this. It's not so evident to me what you mean by that. So that's another really good thing that I would encourage that you do on a person to person basis. Um, and then lastly, um, we want you to attend our networking events. So Monica mentioned earlier that we did a symposium in the fall. We are doing another one in the spring. We think of these symposiums as an opportunity for make you, making you all more accessible and available to one another. We want to use them to profile the work that you're doing and let you learn about the work that others are doing, but also a chance to break down those silos and meet people um, and to learn more about what we're offering you know, through this grant. Next slide, please. Um, so, you know, I would say my overall advice is don't be afraid to ask. You can ask a trusted colleague, like in the example that I was mentioning. Um, you can check with your faculty coordinators, your department chairs, your, depart uh, your division directors, program directors. Um, associate deans in your academic units for faculty affairs. And then, you know, feel free to come to us in the Dean of Faculty's office. You know, my um, my email is just doshi at american.edu. Um, I don't mind people contacting me directly for questions. Um, and neither does my colleague, Abby, who um, also can answer a lot of the questions that you might have. Um, I would also say that, you know, when we do um, town halls and official sessions through the Dean of Faculty's office or through the provost's office, please do attend um, and feel free to drop your questions ahead of time and during the session into the chat. Um, and uh, if you feel like you've heard information that you think doesn't sound right, you know, through the, through the grapevine, please do check with us. Please do verify what you hear. Sometimes information, it gets a little, um, goes a little sideways as it goes through the pipeline, as you can imagine. So, you know, do verify things that seem a bit strange or, um, you know, maybe not right to you. Um, and then lastly, talk to those who've succeeded um, in achieving promotion or career advancement and see what kind of tips they might be able to provide for you. I think most colleagues are happy to be resources. 
Next slide. And back to you, Darian. All right, our last exercise of the afternoon will challenge you to consider questions related to your perception of mentoring at AU. Um, so we again start by asking you about the steps that you've taken that are outlined in the presentation that we talked about regarding our mentorship cohorts. Um, we also ask how does AU recognize and honor mentorship? How can we create more robust and expansive mentoring across the university? And finally, what does your academic unit do to honor and recognize the mentorship? So again, we start by asking you about the steps that you're taking, and then we expand it to the academic unit level and then the university level. You have a few different um, perspectives to, to think about faculty mentorship. And for the interest of time, we're actually going to probably cut this to more to five minutes instead of 10, just so we have some time to, to answer any questions. And I would say don't feel the need to answer all of these. If there's one question you want to provide feedback on on that Google form, feel free. We just would love to hear your thoughts. And since we are short on time, if there is anyone who may want to say a response to one of these questions instead of typing in the chat, feel free to. Hi, I'll just take a moment to say that I am currently a member of the um, associate professor cohort, and I have found the um, process and events thus far to be very helpful in providing a um, collaborative um, and supportive environment um, that gives you access to people in other schools um, and disciplines. And I think it's a very important program, and I want to thank the leadership for put for sponsoring this. Thank you. Thank you. Here's an interesting response. How do full professors, current professors, continue to mentor and be mentors? Do schools integrate this into merit? I don't know if Monica or Priya will be able to answer that question. Yeah, it's not in the, in the merit process, but that's one reason what the advanced grant that we were hoping, it is a gap that we have here at AU. And so typically it happens in an informal level within the academic units. We have a pretty established mentoring program on the, the tenure track side for, for new faculty, but for senior faculty, for older faculty here, it's, it's not so much. So, so that is a gap that we're trying to close here. I saw a comment too in the Google Doc about whether mentorship would count as service. And I would think peer mentorship, you know, I mean, is something you could definitely talk about as um, something that you're doing um, either informally or formally. Um, certainly, if you're leading a peer mentorship cohort, but I think even if you're part of one and if you could speak to the specific things that you've helped others with, that would be um, an important piece of that.
All right, so we do have about five minutes left. So um, you all can keep typing if, if there's a thought that you need to get out. Um, I will bring us to our conclusion in Q&A. Um, I do want to mention that as, as Monica said, we are having our spring symposium on gender and race in STEM on Thursday, April 11th from 1230 to four o'clock. It will be in um, Butler 600 and lunch will be provided. We're happy to announce that we have um, Dr. Dawn Keel Culpepper as our keynote speaker. She's from the University of Maryland's Institutional Transformation Grant. And the Inst Institutional Transformation Grant, also called IT, is um, NSF's advanced projects, um, highest level of funding. So that project is $3 million over the course of five years. So we're definitely excited to build that connection with UMD and Dr. Culpepper and having her at AU for this event will be will be a really a big deal. And I hope everyone is able to attend and more information will be available in the next next month. Great. Well, thank you all for um, joining us today. I know we're um, almost out of time, but um, do, are there any other questions that people have? Thank you for sharing your thoughts on the Google form as well. We will share that with you all and maybe try to answer some of the questions that you have posed there um, if we don't have time for them here. So are there any other questions that we can answer now? All right. Well, it doesn't seem like it at the moment. Thank you again for all your time today. We appreciate it. And please do reach out with any further questions that you might have on mentoring. Um, we're always available. Okay, thank you, guys. I'm quickly going to um, take over. I am dropping the survey link in the chat. Please, before you leave, um, give us your feedback. And you can also check the QR code here, I'm sharing my screen in a second. So you can scan this QR code um, and just give us your feedback. And thank you again for joining. I'm gonna leave this open for a few minutes and then I can end the meeting for everyone. All right, thank you so much. Okay, I think everyone had the opportunity to scan the code or get the link from the chat. I will be ending this meeting. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.